Now, before we get to the update, I want to mention that I've created a Patreon for the GamePad viewer. Now, for those of you that are unknown to Patreon, basically, Patreon is a subscription service that allows you to donate either on a monthly or per creation basis towards things and creators that you want to support. For me, this would help in the fact that I'll be starting school soon and I can't be really dividing too much of my time onto the gamepad viewer as much as I would like to. And at least with a patron it would help with motivating me and incentivizing uh, work on the viewer as well as trying to uh, help with progressing it more into just being more than gamepads, you know, possibly do uh, with racing wheels and flight sticks. At, at least that's what I want to do at some point. So yeah, and now with the update. So the most notable part uh, about this update, I guess, would have to be the GameCube skin. As you can see right here, you know, it's got everything that's supposed to be on a GameCube. And it's it looks pretty nice. But what I have noticed is if you're using a a GameCube adapter or a GameCube with the Mayflash adapter that the values tend to be like really wrong you, the sticks just end up being pretty off aside from the buttons being incorrectly mapped which can already, already currently be fixed it's just the, the sticks and the triggers that end up being really really weird values so with this update as a new remapping feature you can do that with your GameCube controller so start you press this checkbox and it allows you to fix to as a trigger or a stick now with the trigger just make sure you select you know left trigger or right trigger and you press it down so it selects the proper axis I mean for me the trigger is button 6 in this case but for you it would probably show as a different axis you know axis 0 or 3 or whatever now for the lowest value what you're going to want to do is you want to press down on the trigger after clicking and then you're going to let go so it records the value when it's not pressed. For the highest value you're going to do a press and then you're going to hold at the full press and that would be after the digital button. So after that uh, if you want to fix the sticks simply make another mapping and this instead this time select axis press the check mark and select stick now for the lowest value when it comes to uh, horizontal left is negative right is positive but when it comes to vertical up is negative down is positive so lowest value would be up and then highest value would be down so and you know in this case you do the same thing as before you just select the axis you know lowest value and hold so for left and then highest value hold so it'd be right for horizontal and then you repeat the similar process for vertical and whatnot also uh, as you can probably noticed there's a new d-pad mapping option and this is designed mainly for controllers that have a d-pad that ends up being an axis and then every time you press it it's a specific value so you know up would be some weird number and it would be one uh, you know down left up left up right so in that case you know, you'd select the axis and then like before you'd you know press and hold for that configuration you know for up you know it'll be represented as down and whatnot so you keep on going through all of these and you apply at the bottom it'll be set also uh, in this uh, update when you apply mappings you have a visual feedback of whether it applied successfully or whether it didn't and if it didn't you'll be stuck with this error you know unless you like remove the mapping or you know unless you actually fix the mapping so in this case we're going to just stable that and mapping successfully applied. So, uh, along with that neat trick, there's also a another new setting when you export. So typically when you export, 
you've got you know all this whole mess here so you just click to copy and then you know you just share or you set it into your uh, OBS and it'll read it properly but what you couldn't do before was have those mappings persist over here so now when you apply button mappings through the URL they'll properly apply themselves into the button rebinding menu so you can either edit them or remove them and apply your changes so yeah uh, uh, no wait there's also one last thing uh, under the generate URL you'll see there's uh, now you know hints for each type of input and whatnot but this one I haven't really uh, put one in because uh, rotation stop is just kind of there but I'm not sure if I'm going to remove it or not in the future um, for you also got a new option for stick curving so whenever you turn the stick you know it curves you'll see it you might not notice it but it actually does curve when you wander off and if you disable that and you know copy that, paste here, and well once that's gone you select and you'll see it doesn't curve anymore. And there's also the other option for uh, stick offset. So right now when it's drifting left and right that's 22 pixels left, 22 pixels right. You can set that to you know, be 0, 1, you know, 100 pixels, uh, whatever value you feel comfortable with. When you're when you have the stick curving option uh, enabled, it'll curve appropriately to whatever length that is. Actually, I did forget something. Uh, if you go to the remap area, you can see that there's uh, these uh, these uh, boxes here show you uh, what the output is actually for your like sticks and buttons. What you can do now is, let's say you've got like a wonky axis or a button that just, you know, spastically uh, appears and whenever you're trying to map something it just takes over. What you can do now is you can right click it, you know, as many of these things as you want, buttons and axes included. So whenever you try to set it, it just won't. So, oops. so you know, for the button 2 you know, X, uh, as you can see I'm pressing X. You know, I can press it, it's not going to happen, but if I press A, it does. And yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, you, you might have noticed in the beginning of the video there was a, you know, talking about Patreon I've set up for the Gamepad Viewer. Uh, I know not everyone's going to be able to, or, you know, not everyone wants to, uh, you know, uh, support it for, through Patreon and whatnot, but if you know somebody that is willing to or you know if if, if you can you know, spare a dollar or five you know it all helps so yeah uh, until next time <laughs>